Yo, what's up guys? In today's video, I want to show you the best settings for PvE and PvP in Throne and Liberty. And let me tell you, a video like this was never as much needed as it is now for Throne and Liberty. The default settings are insanely bad. I've never seen so bad default settings. It actually hinders you from performing in the game. Like, you will die more often in PvE. You will die a lot more often in PvP. For PvP, it's even worse optimized. And you can probably relate, we all had that where we jumped into a game, we were hyped, we didn't do settings early on, then after 3-4 weeks when we understood the game more, we got better at the game, we realized that our settings were bad and we had to adjust our settings and then it felt like, oh fuck, we have wasted all those weeks and all the muscle memory that we already gained is gone. And I'm here to prevent that mistake, so let's jump right into the guide. Okay, I'm gonna go through the guide tab by tab here, and I will also put timestamps in, so if you only want to adjust a certain part, then um, you can do so. But I highly recommend watching the guide fully, because all of the parts are important and they go hand in hand. Um, maybe one special thing about this here is um, I tried to do the settings, so there's not a big discrepancy between PvE and PvP. There's actually only two changes that you need to do to change from a PvE and to a PvP setting, for example. At the moment I'm PvE, one click on that arrow and show guild member I am in PvP. That's how easy it is. So now let's go over the first big decision that you have to make when you start the game, because by default you will be put into action mode. and I'm gonna tell you, if you're playing action mode for like two minutes and then classic mode for two minutes, classic mode will feel worse and many people are falling for the trap going into action mode gameplay, like getting used to it and then later having to change back to classic mode because they're realizing that PvP is basically not playable in action mode at all. If you're like only PvE, then action mode might be fine, but if you want to experience the game as a whole, Try to get over the first feeling of clunkiness, play classic mode for an hour, you will be used to it and you will have no issue anymore. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently 98.9% .9 of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. Would be amazing if we changed that. And as a little goodie, I prepared a 27 video walkthrough through all the hard quests and uh, puzzles for Throne and Liberty that are released for the open better. So if you don't want to miss it, hit that subscribe button. If we are looking at the move, then we are having left click to move, which is common for games, right? Um, auto move to interaction target, so you can gap close my right away, but you can always cancel that by pressing S. So this is fine. And here we are now coming already to the first big step that actually gets lots of people killed in PvP they prevent falling. So often you will PvP in like areas with terrace where you want to transform or you want to jump off a cliff and all of that. And if you're having that box here checked on, it's harder to do. Of course you can jump off stuff, but it's just harder to do. And um, it's better to learn more precision in your movement and having the ability to dodge on a certain era by falling off something. Then regarding the attacks, I already said it. If you're a PvE, you only show your own. If you are um, in the PvP situation, you also show your guild members animations. So you know when there's like a CC applied and all of that. I would recommend putting skill buffer out because you should be in control of um, the skills that you're pressing and the timing. And you should not have like a skill queue popping up. If you are not good at it yet, I would still recommend not turning it on and starting to learn it because overall this will make your, um, your damage rotations more precise and will give you a better understanding on when to go in and when to go out because like if you're getting used with your brain to have that delay on something it's not good for your um, for your muscle memory then here the next of boxes we are having all of them checked Maybe one thing that's important to note here is the use basic attack toggle. You don't need to um, go and start fighting a monster with a basic attack, for example. It's more time efficient to start going with a skill onto a monster. And then if you have that toggled on, you will automatically keep attacking the monster afterwards with auto attacks without having to toggle on and off auto attacks. And you can always cancel the... Uh, um, 
cancel the attacks. If you, in case you want to like retreat with an enemy. Then when we are going to show character name, this is all up to you. Um, I think sometimes it's better to know like the names of the enemy players. So you, it's easier for you to target specific people. Here I have everything turned off that is like messing with um, game performance or like giving information that is not needed. When you are still questing, I would recommend um, turning the um, NPC on, then it's easier to um, to navigate through the um, NPCs. But once you're done done with the quests and leveled up, um, it's not needed anymore. It just makes the game look a bit bad. So like this is important, show detailed HP and MP information, of course. Um, if here in this part, this is important to actually find um, people to go dungeon hunting with, if you're not like um, with a guild permanently. Because um, people want to know what damage weapon, uh, what weapon you have. So basically, you will be judged on: Oh, are you a good DPS? Are you able to uh, go into the dungeon with us? Yes or no, based on your weapon. Which is also why I would highly recommend upgrading weapon first, because otherwise it's sometimes hard to find parties if you are like behind the curve in this part. So definitely have that checked. Now we are at something that's already, I would say, like a key factor. Because the game is tap targeting, you can target with your mouse in classic mode, but in many situations you do want to tap target, and this is the best setting for tap targeting for PvE and PvP. And um, I know Monsters is checked off here, but trust me, if you're doing this and you're having here an auto target when attacking, you are having um, attacking monsters checked on top and the others. So same settings, but here you're checking attacking monsters. That means if you're, as soon as you're getting attacked from a monster, you will always have it in focus. So um, there's actually no targeting needed, and you can also with one skill automatically trigger the trigger the uh, the basic attack. This works for PVE and PVP. And maybe one thing that is important here is that what is a feuding player? The so feuding players are basically players that you can personally set onto like, I would say it's like a bounty list of people that you do want to kill or like are like extremely dangerous to your team or to your guild. And this allows you to target like the best players of the enemies out of like a huge bulk. So this is a really important feature here. If you are playing PvP, you do need to have this checked. For PvE, I recommend at 90% because the army toy is making sure that you're constantly um, regening health and it should be permanently running and the leaves that you need for the army toy are actually not expensive now if you're looking at the item here it says uh, what are like the items that you're automatically putting into your inventory and while you're leveling and while you're still doing your lithography book you do want to have auto dissolve off but once you for example have your lithography book everything completed with all the gray items that exist then I would turn auto dissolve on, set it for example to common, so all of those will be automatically dissolved and you have more space on your inventory. I am not at that stage yet, so for me it's turned off. If you're going to the camera, I highly recommend going on a rotation sensitivity of 200%. Because if you, like for example, you're fighting in PvP, let's say, and someone comes from the back, if it takes you like that much time to rotate, um, see what where they're at, like it's it's not a good way to play so um, if you're doing it at 200 percent and you're doing it properly you can do one twist with your hand like a really small twist and you will get 180 degree um switch going then for the shake effects i think they are useful to get information but um you should tune them down to the lowest so you are realizing that it's happening but it's not um distracting you this is personal preference so that if you are on a target, you can lock the camera. Um, some people are like that. I think it's hindering for PvP when you need to switch and adjust to multiple things. That's why I drop off. But I've seen people doing well and I've talked to some friends that actually have it turned on and they think it's better, especially on uh, Dagger Great Sword when they go in as an assassin. Then here on the last part, we can determine where our character is. I have moved my character down to a percent of minus five percent because i think mostly it's more important what is in front of me 
but I still want to have like a gap so I can see surrounding monsters. And I think this is a more viable option than what most people are doing, like putting the character in the middle and then moving up the HUD. I think this gives you a better overview of um, PvP situations than uh, um, like a HUD in the middle that sometimes covers people that are coming close and you would maybe be able to dodge a skill. Large scale combat mode, you should always use it. Um, in this one, that should definitely be um, turned off. If you are using the astral vision um, effectively and you're getting good at um, targeting with the astral vision then this might be uh, um, nice i for myself have um, more like the play style that i use astral vision on cursor and then i use a shortcut on my keyboard to go on to uh, um, to go on to that target and this is uh, like for me the first um like the fastest events that I can trigger with like splitting it up into mouse and keyboard and not having it like only mouse, for example. You do want to have show our army toys off because it's a useless info and um, it will increase your performance. Uh, yeah, world map transparency when moving, I think it's nice so you can have the map on and move and uh, navigate better and more efficiently. This feature, I would say people that have it on and actively use the world map as an overlay they will act, they will level faster. Uh, the rest here is more like um, more like preference. In the schedule here, you can see up here what are the events and when they are coming. And this is up to your preference when you want to get informed. I like to have like a bit of adjustment time. Maybe I want to change like a skill or like a set or something. So I do want to do that. Um, if you're new to the game, you can keep those on. This will explain you how to do certain controls in the um, when you're, for example, transforming into a um, eagle. But of course, at some point, you will not know it. Um, important is this down here, where you will actually get a warning if um, you are about to leave an area. But sometimes leaving an area will result in getting all of your points deducted. So definitely keep that turned on. In the chat, I have everything that is low key information. I have tried to put that as small as possible so it's not interfering with the game overview. Uh, in the UI, it's basically the same. I put everything to the smallest. The only change that I did is I'm going to a cursor size of plus two for a better overview on, um, on cursor placement. I would actually really like to have a color change for my cursor because I don't like the color that much. It's not that contrast. I think some people will probably get annoyed when they start hovering over the items in their inventory and the additional information are not popping up. So if you're one of those people, set all of that to zero. So as soon as you hover over something, it's actually popping and you don't have any delays. Now let's go to the notification tab. Here you can set like player attack notification when you're getting attacked. I have put the uh, all notification interval as high as possible because once I got notified, like I don't need it again, like I'm in an alert mode. And I have set different sounds for different things so it's easier to recognize what is happening. This value here, low health notification, I would set that based on current damage that players are able to do. So if they are able to one-shot you, for example, at like 40% health, nah, then maybe set it at like 45%. So um, you have some time to react, to heal, retreat, get a healer, to not be like in one shot area. So put that in like your one shot. For the inventory, this is unnecessary. Um, notifications is personal preference. And here for content, if you are, for example, interested in like what is going on during the siege fair and all of that, you can toggle that on to have it um, pop me up on your stream. Now let's go over the graphics. Um, here, I cannot say too much because I am, my PC is good enough. I have everything set on Epic. I have an Nvidia card. For PVP, it's sometimes better to go from quality to ultra performance, depending on what your computer is able to do. Because some people have in the quality settings, um, like issues as soon as it comes to mass scale and PVP. If um, you're having AMD, I sadly, I don't know what that is. I've only had Nvidia graphic cards at the moment. But if you are having um, performance issues, I highly recommend um, reducing stuff like reflection, shading, 
like all of the stuff that is not important that is only terror quality like it, it should be somewhat visible so you know where the edges are where the hitboxes are but it's not that important if you're like in a pvp situation where you just want to make sure that you're seeing all the skills from your enemies properly it's nice to remove all the unnecessary information like for example music and all of that and then have different loud sounds for certain things so most importantly is like the battle effects which um, will sometimes tell you when there's like skills, certain skills casted around you and stuff and this is something where you condition your ear to to actually dodge on on listening rather than dodging on seeing because actually our ear has a faster reaction speed than like our hands now let's come to a really individual topic and this is the shortcuts like the default shortcuts will give you really long movement ways between your finger setting and like keys that you need to reach like sometimes you actually have to move like your hand from like one side of the keyboard to the other and i would say like a golden rule of nice uh, shortcuts is that your wrist can stay stable on your wrist support and you do not have to move your wrists and you can do most of it just by moving your fingers this would be like ideal and as you see, we have quite a lot of um, of skills on our bar. It's not like a game <laughs> where League where we have like um, four spells, no? and then like a couple of potions and shit. Like here, we have lots of stuff to press. So it's a challenge, but I highly recommend just placing your hand on the keyboard in a relaxed position, and then just check and write down all the keys in that relaxed position that you can reach and then put your shortcuts based on what you can reach comfortably and not what is in that game already put there some things that you need to reach a lot and are need to need to be like extremely accessible is for example the defense skill this skill will allow you to dodge an attack from either like a boss or like even in pvp so this is a skill this is a key that you always need to be reaching ASAP and needs to have like one of your fastest reaction speeds on that key. I can show you my personal shortcuts. Maybe they are also suitable for you. So I am doing like a, um, a skill line from one to six. You see right here, like recovery crystals, potions and all of that stuff that is like running for a longer period of time. This is which I did not fit in the range of my hand. So I checked the longest runtime. And there I put like keys that are like make me move my hand and then I can go back again. But I can do this in like certain situations and they are still close enough to reach them also fast. I also made sure that the way I set the skills into the slots is actually also my skill rotation. So I can roll my fingers. So basically here, if I want to attack a mob, it's always one, two, three, four. And then I will follow up with five and then six then i will have a buff follow up with recoil shot and actually the monster should be dead by then already so always try to get your combos that you're doing in order and set skills with similar cooldowns um, next to each other so you don't have like uh, all active all active two minute cooldown active active so you have like nice nice flowing orders that will also make it easier to keep track of all of your cooldowns for accessibility hot size smallest then there's another option if you're pressing escape and you go to edit hut here you can set up where certain things are coming some people enjoy or have a better overview over their health and their mana if their health and mana part is more in the uh, more in the center somewhere so it's easier for them to look at it i am more working with um, like peripheral type like for me it's fine um also if you are having like party targeting astral targeting and you're not using shortcuts it might be wise to move them in the middle but here like for me it's actually working surprisingly with the default settings pretty well yeah if you still have any questions about the settings or like something specific let me know in the comments i will try to answer everything in 24 hours and thanks that you watched that video to the end. I know it was a long one, but it is really important. Cheers, guys.